So hello, my name is Dr. Jeff Kett and I'm a member of the academic staff at the School of Computer Science and Electronic Engineering at Bangor University and it's a great privilege to be able to um, speak to you about the courses um, and describe our, our different courses which we do here in Bangor. Um, so it's a great shame I can't welcome you in person to the school but I hope this video provides you with a, an informed set of slides allowing you to make, an, make a decision about the, the choices which you, you have going forward. So in the School of Computer Science and Electronic Engineering, we have seven courses um, ranging from electronic engineering through to computer science. So in terms of the courses, we, we run an electronic engineering degree, um, and that's a, that's a relatively broad postgraduate degree, which allows you to build upon some of that understanding you've developed within the, your, your bachelor degree, but it also allows you to, to specialize in particular areas of electronic engineering, whether it be communication or, or, or microelectronics. We also have some more specialized electronic engineering postgraduate courses. So the first one is nanotechnology and microfabrication, and the second one is on broadband and optical communications. And both of these really link into a lot of our research expertise um, and, uh, and also link quite well with some of our industrial collaborators. So in addition to the electronic engineering degrees, we also have a number of computer science postgraduate degrees. The first one is uh, advanced computer science, and that again allows you to build upon some of the, the expertise and understanding you've developed within your bachelor degree. We then have a, an advanced data science degree and that allows you to gain a greater understanding of data management and data analytics, including machine learning and artificial intelligence. And then finally, we have a very popular degree known as computing and computing for data science. And what this allows is students from other disciplines um, to enter into computer science and really improve their, their employability. So for all of the courses I mentioned that they're, they're relatively similarly structured. Um, so you start off in the first semester, you, you undertake a series of elective or compulsory modules. Um, and then the second semester, you do something relatively similar where, where you select some uh, elective or compulsory, mod or, or, or compulsory modules. And then in the final semester, you do a, an advanced project. And during that project, you, you'll be assigned a, a project coordinator who, who would be a member of staff. And they would see you on a regular basis over the course of the, 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 month, the few months that you're doing that project. And sometimes also you'll be assigned an industrial collaborator. So, you, if, if, so that gives you some, some real life experience. So when you start your degree at Bangor University, you'll be assigned a personal tutor and the personal tutor will be there to help you with any personal or technical issues that you might encounter over the course of your degree. Um, from, from an early stage, we also provide you with full access to all of our computing and laboratory facilities so you can really get a good understanding, a good feel for the different software packages, the different equipment we have available. So in terms of comments I've received from students over the past few years about why they like our degrees, one comment that's featured very prominently is the fact that we have relatively small class sizes compared to many universities. And this gives you a much more personalized learning experience. So you really get to know the lecturers, you get to be able to um, speak to them on a one-to-one -one basis, and it really helps you to improve your, 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 your learning experience here in Bangor University. We also have very, very good graduate levels of recruitment. So, so students who, who, who graduate with these degrees tend to find uh, gainful employment relatively quickly or go on to a further study such as a PhD. So I'm most familiar with the na microfabrication nanotechnology course. So I'm going to just mention why this is important and how we teach it within the school. So I'm just going to really start here with the humble smartphone. Um, there's around about 4 billion of these in the world, um, but virtually everything within a smartphone is made using the sort of technologies you're going to be learning on this degree. It's probably one of the most complex computational components as a, a per unit volume which has ever been produced. So we open it up and we, we have a look inside. I wouldn't recommend doing this, but you see there's a whole range of different components which are all made using microfabrication and, and some of the nanotechnology processes. And that includes the integrated circuits, the RF, the RF components, the screens, um, the memory components. All of these are made using microfabrication processes. If you take one of those integrated circuits and you, you take off the plastic coverings, this is the sort of thing you see. It's probably billions of transistors and, and memory devices on this integrated circuit. Um, and it's really the, the processes which um, we have within wafer fabs, which really allow us to shrink down these transistors so that we can 
integrate that many transistors on a, an integrated circuit. So this is the very first transistor. It was made in 1947 uh, by Bell Labs in New Jersey. Um, and that was probably around about the size of a 10p coin. But over the last 70 years, what we've been able to do is really shrink that down to uh, something around about 30 nanometers in size. So to give you, um, give you an indication of how small that is when you compare it, compare it to the COVID-19 virus, for example, actually this is around about 2,500 times smaller than the COVID-19 virus. So it's a very, very small, small component. And the fact that we can make them so small and well performing and low cost allows us to make those sort of smartphones, which I talked about earlier. So during this um, postgraduate degree, you'd really learn about the different technologies, the different processes, which allow us to reduce the size of those transistors down to that sort of size. So how do we teach this course in Bang University? Well, we have some very extensive research facilities, uh, which are very proud of in the school. Um, shown here is a picture of our clean room facilities at, in, in the School of Electronics and Computer Science. Um, and from a very, very early stage, of your degree program, you really be exposed to some of these equipment. You'd learn how to use them, learn how to operate them, learn how they work. Um, and one of the key messages I want to get across is we have excellent research facilities, but these will be made available to you over the course of your degree scheme. So shown here is uh, uh, the inside of our clean room, which I, I took just before we went into lockdown, in fact. Um, and you can see there's a whole range of facilities from patterning. So we have nanowim print technology, approaches we have photolithography and we also have some metallization approaches such as uh, physical vapor deposition and evaporation and we also have some pattern transfer approaches such as etching um, and during the course you'll you, you, you learn how to operate some of these things you'll also learn how how the processes work um, and also be able to apply them into real world applications and then in addition to our clean room facilities we also have some um, inert atmosphere facilities and that allows us to process um, materials or semiconductor materials which are particularly um, vulnerable to any oxidation. So those would be typically the sort of materials you might use, for example, in a, a smartphone screen, such as organic um, light emitting diodes. So in addition to our microfabrication facilities, we also have some um, very good analytical facilities as well. And these allow us to do some uh, device measurement, device characterization, as well as some material measurement and characterization as well. So we have very new facilities for doing a lot of the, the characterization of devices and materials in the School of Electronics. In addition, we also have some very advanced facilities for undertaking laser machining. The school has a, a long, proud history of doing laser fabrication. We've had um, a spin-out company from the school, but a lot of those facilities do still reside within the school and you can really learn about how we can use laser fabrication to manufacture some, some devices and, and structures. Um, in, a, in addition to our what, what we would consider more research facilities, we, we do also have state-of-the-art uh, bespoke teaching facilities as well. So we have a number of different computer laboratories, all, all of which are networked and have some advanced software facilities on there, which allow us to do computational modeling and computational programming. Um, we also have access to high performance computing. We also have some very advanced lecture facilities. So, so this is an example of one of our many lecture theaters. And all of our facilities have um, recording facilities so that we can actually record our lectures. You know, should, should you inadvertently miss a lecture, then you can catch up relatively quickly. So just finally, I'll, I'll give an overview of the sort of research we do within the school um, and, and the flavor of the type of activities we, we, we get involved in. So we have three main research groups, but the, the work I'm mostly gonna focus upon is the, the research related to photonics, sensors, and, and next generation electronics. And shown here are just a few examples of the type of work we do. We can make some very small scale lenses, for example. We also have a group actively working on developing uh, nanoscale laser devices, so the next generation of laser components. Um, we also have some academics working on developing microscopy approaches, which allow us to go to, to sub wavelength. Um, and that's been promoted in a number of different news outlets, such as the BBC. Um, and then finally, we also do a lot of work on microfluidics. So we have a, a very advanced uh, program of activity developing uh, microfluidic sensors for, for, for real-time or, or monitoring of cancer cells. Um, and then also we do a lot of 
uh, transistor fabrications. So, so one of our groups works upon next generation power electronic devices as well. So that concludes my talk. Um, you know, feel free to contact either myself or, or, or one of the admissions tutors, but we're always happy to take questions and help you as much as possible. Thank you very much for your time.